everybody, Dr. Jamie here, and you are about to listen to the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience. I hope you enjoy the tips and advice in this segment. Hey everyone, Dr. Jamie here with the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience, and today I have with me Vaishali Nikaday, and she is a spiritual educator and energy seer, and she is with Uncorking Intuition School, uncorkingintuitionschool.com, and she is going to talk with us a little bit about intuition. That's right, that gut feeling you get about things that tells you do it or don't do it, that might be an energy or a feeling that you need to tap into and listen to a little bit better. By Shelley, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah, so I guess the first question um, that I want to ask you right off the bat is how did you get started in psychic readings and intuition? It's such an interesting topic. Yes, thank you for that question. It's actually a really interesting story. Uh, At one point in my life, I was having some problems related to some of the business transactions that I was working on. And what I saw was there was like a pattern that kept repeating itself, like I would work on a transaction and something would happen and it would kind of fall apart. And after this happened two, three times, I realized that this is not really a coincidence and I need to do something and I need to get help. And the first thing that occurred to me was I need to get help from a psychic. So I went and I sought out some psychics. It's really easy. You can just go to Craigslist and you can find some or you can Google them or you can go on Fiverr. There are so many ways to find them. And I've used each and every one of these resources to start finding some psychics and I started getting some readings from them. And when I got the readings, uh, they would tell me a little bit and... I realized that they weren't like giving me a concrete answer or giving me something solid which I could work on or which I could look at in order to be able to find my answer or find my solution. So finally, after 10 or 20 readings, I kind of got frustrated and I I thought that maybe I could just do this myself. I need to learn this myself. I don't need the help of these people. I could just be better off learning this myself. And I started studying about readings. I started studying about energy. And I took courses and I completed courses on how energy works, how intuition works, what works, how and what we can do to change or shift the energy and how or what we can do to change and shift things. And once I, started complete, once I completed those courses, I actually started teaching about it. And some of the things you can change and some of the things you cannot change. When you do a reading or when a person is, seeks a reading, they're actually looking for information. Sometimes they already know the answer in their gut. And sometimes a reader can offer you a prediction. And with that prediction, you can actually kind of change things or do something to change the outcome. For instance, if I were to tell you that tomorrow is not really a good day for you, you may get into an accident or something if you drive. So you may be a little bit more careful driving or you may just not go out. And one example of this would be like, if you remember 9-11, September 11. Some people, they actually had some sort of a gut feeling and they didn't go to work. And it turns out it was actually their intuition talking to them. It Mm -hmm. saved their own life. So intuition talks to us in like different, different ways. And once you start getting tuned to it, then you can actually learn how to listen to it. And you can use it in your own life. All of us have it. We are born with these intuitive abilities. So you talked about shifting energy. Can you give us, I know this is a little bit off the cuff here, but is there like one or two major ways that you can teach us today where we can shift the energy? 
So that actually goes into a different topic, and I'm going to be teaching some classes related to how we can move the energy or how we can change the energy. But one of the techniques is um, the basic premise of the technique is that we have to be able to release pain. Just like we take care of our body, we have to mm -hmm. take care of our spirit. We are actually a spirit in a body. So the physical body is something that we have in our own life, like it's only for this life. And once mm -hmm. the life is over, the body becomes, let's say, the body uh, is no more. And the spirit kind of moves on, and it will take a new body. It's just like having a car. When you buy a car, you buy the car, and let's say maybe 10, 15, or 7 years down the road, whatever your time limit is, you start seeing that, you know, this car is needing like too many repairs and I just need to replace it. So you actually get rid of that car and then you buy a new car. And the same thing works for our spirit and our body. This body is something that our spirit has taken for this lifetime. And at the end of this lifetime, when we'll no longer have our body, we will kind of take a new body. So in order to be able to uh, change the energy, we have to be able to work with the spirit. And just like right. we take care of our body, like, you know, you take a shower on a daily basis, you clean your teeth, you clean your face, you have to be able to work with the spirit and you have to be able to release all the pain, all this foreign energy that is trapped in the spirit. How interesting! So you teach you teach on this. Is there um, is there a place that the listeners can find out more information um, about your upcoming class? Should they go to the UncorkingIntuitionSchool dot com? Yes. Yeah, so if they go to my website, uh, I will be doing a free webinar on Monday, okay. which is the twentieth of November, twenty seventeen. Okay. And I will be talking about different types of intuition. We have Intuition doesn't strike us in just one way. It's going to strike all of us differently. And even for one person, it is going to strike us differently in each and every situation. Sometimes we will get one ability to strike us. Sometimes it will be other ability. And the perfect example of this is like in an accident. If you look at a car accident or if you've ever witnessed a car accident, and I believe the book Blink talks about it as well, if you ask 10 people what they saw during the accident, all the 10 of you, all the 10 people are going to give us like different versions of how they saw the accident. Absolutely. And yet each of those versions is going to be correct. Someone will say that, oh, I saw the car hit the other car, and that's when you're using your sense of vision. And someone will say, oh, my God, I heard this huge sound. That's when they're using, they're showing that their sense of sound is much more stronger than their sense of vision. And someone will say that they just froze, and they're actually showing their feelings, like how they felt the accident before any of their senses kicked in. Mm. And one person may just, describe how one car came about and did something wrong. The other person may describe how other car came about and did something wrong. Someone will say that I smelled the fire or I smelled smoke or I was inhaling smoke. And that is like they are telling you that their sense of smell is stronger. So just like our body has all these senses and just in the scenario of an accident, how 10 people are going to give you like 10 different versions and all of them are going to be correct because that's just how they are seeing it. It's not a question about right or wrong. It's just like their senses. They're actually telling you that, listen, my vision sense is stronger than my other senses. And that's mm -hmm. why I saw this first. Or my sense of hearing is stronger then my vision, and even though I saw it, the first thing they'll say is, oh my God, I heard this loud sound, or I heard like a sound which came from nowhere. So the intuition, That's it works. So interesting. That's so interesting. So yeah, I guess, and how, and so how do you tie that 
into intuition. So when you're working with someone, do you kind of tap into, you know, if they see better, if they hear better, if they smell, like one of their senses, do you play off that? Does that play a part in this at all? So just like these are the senses of our body, the intuition are actually the senses of our soul. And wow. we have uh, different, different senses. Like the example um, I was going to give you is um, this example where a friend of mine said that he had a very interesting transaction and he said, listen, if you do this, then we can all make a lot of money. I said, yeah, cool, let's do it. And uh, I started from my home uh, to go to the bank to make a wire and uh, my logical brain, it was telling me that, yeah, yeah, let's do it, you know. And then I had charted out how I'm going to use the money. I'm sure all of you have been there. Yeah. <laughs> Distributing the money before it hits your bank account. And my gut was telling me something different. My gut was like, no, no, don't do it. And the drive from my home to the bank is, let's say, 10 minutes. And just those 10 minutes, I was having a conversation. And this conversation was, I was fighting. It was a fight between the spirit and the body. And mm -hmm. the logical mind is telling me that I need to do it because, you know, I have these 10 reasons on how I can use the money. And my spirit is telling me I get, like, really weird feeling in my gut that don't do this, this is wrong, it's not going to work. And I'm like, no, I have to do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I was, I was so determined at that time. This was before I was actually uh, practicing intuitive. I was so determined that I said, no matter what, I'm going to go and do it. So I went to the bank and I filled out the form for the wire transfer. And uh, the guy said, okay, let me just go and do the transfer. So he goes ahead and does the transfer, and he says, listen, this is not going to work. He said one of the numbers or one of the digits in the number is wrong in the routing number or account number. One of the numbers was off. So he said that since the cutoff is t today and uh, we can no longer do this transfer today, you have to come back tomorrow. So I went home, and I realized that, okay, one of the numbers I had not copied correctly. Even the universe was not supporting me, but I was so determined. Yes. So the next day I go to the bank again, and I do the wire. And I asked him, I said, and this is like my intuition actually talking. I asked him on the spur of the moment, I said, oh, by the way, what is like a refund policy for a wire? And apparently... I didn't know that at the time. You can actually recall a wire in, it was either seven days or ten days. So I just gave him whatever information I had. The numbers were all correct this time, and he went and did the wire. And then within a few days, my friend calls me and tells me, listen, that guy, he's actually not real. He said, we just mm -hmm. lost the money. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I, w I went back to the bank and I said, listen, that wire we did, I need to recall it. So the long story short, I recalled the wire and I was actually able to get the money back in my own bank. And my friend, he actually did Western Union. With Western Union, there's no way you can actually get the money back. So he actually ended up losing the money. But even at that time, the intuition was talking to me and it was kind of leading me and guiding me. And I was so self-absorbed in my own thoughts. Like, I had, like, my own plan. <laughs> so yeah. I forced the wire. So that's no, just, like, one important. example. Yes, and I think it's important to really be aware of your intuition and the signs. I think the energy can create you to see signs. So I have a similar example. When I went to do a wire transfer, my husband and I, we're so broke, young, stupid with money, got a tax refund and decided to take the whole tax refund and buy a, like, used boat. Of course, the guy wanted us to wire the money. He's, you know, out of town. So the whole shebang, the bank wouldn't give us um, enough money to make the wire. Publix wouldn't let us, like, it's a grocery store here, like, over – Take, overtake so much money so we could get, it was very hard to get the money. All the signs were telling us no. Finally, we had all the cash. 
we go to make the wire transfer, and my gut is screaming, don't do it. And I remember me and my husband were in the car. We were both looking at each other, and we were like, you, you want to do this, right? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I want to do it too. But we both knew we didn't want to do it. Something inside was screaming. So I think it's important to all the listeners, if you are getting that feeling that just something's not right about this, and you're getting signs on top of it, to take a step back and don't do it. You can always move forward at a later date, retreat, walk away from it, rethink about it, and take time before you make a decision. And just because Vaishali was able to get her money back, that's a rare situation, people. So don't bank on the fact that you're going to get your money back. So especially when it comes to money, I would take time and think about it and listen to your intuition. Now, I have a question for you, guys, Shelly. What if someone, like one of the listeners right now is like, you know, I want to learn more about intuition, my ability. What can they do to sort of enhance their intuition? Where do they even begin? Okay, so the first step is uh, in order for you to enhance your intuition is to actually see how intuition is talking to you. Yeah. And uh, it's going to talk to each of us differently. I have developed a quiz on my website, and you can actually go to the quiz, and it has different ways. The reason I have that quiz in there is it actually shows you different ways and different real-life examples on how intuition talks to you. Okay. And the first thing you've got to do is realize is intuition is going to talk to each of us differently. And sometimes, just for ourselves, you know, different senses of intuition are going to kick in. So the first step is to acknowledge and to kind of go through the quiz and see which, which of the examples do you really rhyme with, that's when you'll kind of start to see how intuition is talking to you. And it's never really a forced vibration, intuition. It's very soft and very subtle. Like sometimes when you're taking a shower, you'll get an idea. You'll get this idea, and then it turns out it was like the idea or the answer or the solution that you're looking for. So intuition actually talks to you when you're doing like normal things, when you're not forcibly thinking. The mind needs to be really, really calm. And that's why we use meditation to calm the mind. The reason we use meditation is it actually calms the mind. And when the mind is really, really calm, that's when you can actually connect to your own intuition. And uh, you'll start getting those thoughts. So you will see that whenever your intuition is striking you, it's like when you're doing normal things, like let's say you have a drive from your home to work or your home to the gym. And you're just driving. You may be listening to something uh, on the radio or have a CD on or nothing. And then suddenly this thought strikes you. And that's really your intuition trying to tell you something. Some people may just hear like a soft whisper. Some people may kind of see like a flash of images. Some people, they'll just like get the answer. So there are different, different ways it will strike you, but I think one of the most important thing is it's going to strike you when your mind is really calm and it doesn't have to do thinking. Like a lot of people ask me, how do I know whether it's my own intuition or whether I'm forcing it? And if you're kind of going through the things in your mind and consciously thinking, it's most likely not your own intuition. Intuition is more like a subconscious thing. It just comes when you're not completely expecting it. Okay. Like, uh, let's say that I'm just going out uh, and uh, I had to deposit the check. And then suddenly as I'm opening the garage door, I hear this voice, oh, you forgot to take the check. But that's because it's just like a normal routine. But at the same time, that's my intuition telling me that, oh, I need to go and deposit the check. So I think the mm -hmm. first thing you need to do is to be able to calm your mind and look for answers in a daily scenario where you're not really using your mind or where you're just relaxed and your mind is calm and something suddenly strikes you. That really is your intuition I talking to you. And I think that's important. So one of the, one of the things that I uh, coach clients on is starting their morning off not so hectic. So many of us start our mornings off by 
checking social media and comparing ourselves and looking at our email and seeing how far behind we are before the day has even started. We're racing to get the kids to school. We're rushing in traffic. All this chaos, how can you find your intuition in all that? How can you go with your gut feeling? You can't. So I try to say take hold of the day before the day takes hold of you. And if you can, listeners, I encourage you, get up a few minutes early, whether you're sitting in a hot shower and you're just calming your mind and centering, or if you have a water view, go to a window where you have a water view and sit in front of the water or the sun and just stop for a moment and be present. Your body is going to tell you a lot. It might tell you why the day is going to be good. It might tell you to take a different route to work. It might, who knows what it's going to do, but there is a, a real importance in kind of centering your mind, calming your mind, and you're going to hear your body talking to you. You hold all of the answers that you need. So for those of you right now that are listening, kind of thinking like, I don't know what to do about this. Yes, you do. If you would quiet your mind, kind of get tap into that subconscious and just relax for a moment, you probably are going to find the answer within you. So, okay, so Vitaly, so if someone's interested in learning more about their intuition, they need to acknowledge the feelings that they're having, they need to calm their mind. Is there anything else that they have to do? So I think you made a really good point in the mo- uh, just now about uh, just taking a few minutes in the morning, and that is really important to just sit down and meditate and just connect, connect with your mind, connect with your body, and just listen to what information you are getting. And if you are just sitting there and thinking, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do that, uh, I think you kind of got to let go of those thoughts. And one important thing from what you just mentioned is with the intuition, you'll never get like the complete solution. What you'll get is like the first step of the solution. And then once you finish that, you'll kind of get the next step. It's Mm -hmm. like, it's like a GPS. Uh, You won't like go to your destination. In order to go to your destination, you have to go through point one and point two and point three. And we cannot connect the dots ourselves. Our intuition can Mm -hmm. connect the dots. And when the intuition is like offering us a solution, it is already like giving us the first step and then the next step and so on. So we have to be able to trust it. And then it's going to lead us forward, and it will take us to the solution, but it's not like you don't start the car from your home and end up at the destination. You have to go through a journey. So the intuition is the same way, except that you are not able to see the end point. So it's difficult for us. If we've never used it, it's difficult for us to trust it. Like intuition Mm -hmm. is the only sense which gets validated in the future. For our Mm -hmm. eyes, our ears, we can all see it, and it's all in present time. And with intuition, it's just a feeling. And you trust it, and you do what it says, and then you'll know in the future that, oh, that was true. This is really how it works. And most of us... Well, it's funny... Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, No, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's funny funny that you say that, because I do trust my intuition. Um, But there are times when I kind of, like, have this, like, bizarre conversation with it and I'm like on little things and I'm like you know what you're telling me to do this but I'm going to do this because it's maybe it's something really crazy small that's not really going to impact my life and and then I do what my intuition is telling me not to do and like a hundred percent of the time my intuition was right so I, it's just like I almost play a game with it to kind of test it to see are you really like always right <laughs> as funny as it sounds but the truth is, is when I test my intuition and I do the opposite of what it's telling me to do or not do, my intuition is always right. So that kind of leads me to the last question that I have for you today. And it's, is there a good way for people to test their intuition? All right. So I think uh, I kind of test upon this. Uh, there is a quiz on my website which they can take. And this is actually to test their intuition. Okay. All the questions in that quiz, they are all real-life situations. And I would encourage like you guys to take the quiz and think carefully before you answer each and every question. And that's how really you'll know which part of your intuition is more developed 
and where you can kind of get the answer soon. Like everybody, we live in a world of like instant gratification. Everybody wants everything now, now, now. And yeah. intuition is like a little bit more subtle. <laughs> you cannot yeah. force it. You cannot force it, but at least by taking the quiz, you'll kind of realize which abilities you have that are stronger. And um, I'm also going to be doing this free call where I'll be talking about each and every ability, and I'll be giving like a real-life example from each and every ability so that you can identify with which sense is it that is working really strongly for you, which sense it is that is not working for you, and also pay attention to the messages that you get in your day-to-day life. Like, for instance, the messages which people got when, you know, they didn't go to work on 9-11 or they just missed their train. It wasn't really like they themselves. It was more their intuition talking to them that something is going to be off today or the message that I got when I had to deposit the check in my bank or to do the wire transfer. Mm -hmm. But the thing is we are like so bent on following our logic that we don't let our intuition do the job. And just kind of by letting go of the logical thoughts, it's really hard in the beginning, but if we let go of the logical thoughts and kind of just listen a little bit more to our intuition, we can start to get in touch with it. It's just like anything else. You are not going to develop it overnight. Let's say you're training for a half marathon. The first run you're going to do is probably not going to be 10 miles unless you've been running that distance all along. The first Mm -hmm. run you will do is like three to five miles, and then you develop your muscles, and then you do six miles the next week and seven miles the next week and build up your muscle. So the intuition is the same way. It's actually a muscle that needs to be flexed, and you need to build it. So just start by paying attention to... Some of the subtle thoughts that you get or some of the subtle things that happen and see how they actually play out in the physical world. Like if you just get a thought that, oh, I shouldn't do the wire, and you ignore it, and then what happens? So that was one example. And the example that you gave, that's another example. Mm-hmm. So, so kind, of, kind of like this is, again, with being in tune with your body. What I love most about what you just said probably the biggest takeaway from this episode for me is that sometimes we have to put aside logic, it, not, not completely, but we're putting it aside to sort of become more self-aware, more in tune with our body, hear our body. So it doesn't mean, listeners, that you're not a logical person. You need to be logical and realistic when it comes to your goals, your money, your health. But at the same time, you also need to add in another factor, and that's your intuition and gut. But the only way to tap into that is by sort of centering your mind, clearing the chaos, and hearing what it has to say because there are answers. You're not going to get the end answer, but you're going to get the first step. Your, it's, your intuition is going to take you on a journey. It's very subtle. So, um, Vitaly, these are some awesome tips on intuition and going with your gut. I love it. Um, okay, so if people want to be a part of your seminars, learn from you um, and what you have to offer, it sounds like you've got some really fun stuff coming up with energy. They can go to uncorkingintuitionschool.com. Is that right? Yes. They can go to the okay. uh, main site and hit the quiz button and take the quiz. And once they take the quiz, they'll get information on the free call that's going to be coming up in a week and some of the other ways you can use your intuition. One of the ways to strengthen your intuition is to actually clean up your spirit or to release all the stuck energies and stuck patterns and so on. And I'll be teaching that in a workshop at the end of the month. But first I think you need to kind of get in touch with your intuition, see what senses are working for you, see what your intuition is trying to tell you, how uh, how long you've been ignoring it, or maybe you've been not. (laughs) But (laughs) just get in touch with it a little bit. Just try to... Try to be an observer in your daily life instead of just being a doer. Just don't go do, 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 just get up and do this and do that and just like follow a routine. Just pause for a second. Just do a little bit of meditation even if it's five minutes. 
And Excellent. I, I love it. So, guys, everyone that's listening right now, um, do me a favor. Don't always be a doer. Pause for a moment. Listen to your intuition. Um, you are listening to the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience with Vaishelly Nikaday, and she is with Uncorking Intuition School, uncorkingintuitionschool.com. She's a spiritual educator and an energy seer, and she has some amazing seminars coming up. So please go to uncorkingintuitionschool.com to find out more information about her. And you can do me a favor. Go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. Ha <laughs> ha. Go to YouTube. Go to iTunes and subscribe to the Dr. Jamie Show. Every like, every follow helps us grow to keep bringing on amazing guests and interesting topics like today's on intuition and gut. Do us a favor after you go to YouTube and you can comment below with your biggest takeaway from this particular episode. Have an awesome day, and remember, don't only be a doer. Pause to kind of tap inside and hear what's going on with your mind and body. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience. I really hope that you enjoyed the tips and advice given on today's segment. Do me a favor and go to iTunes and my YouTube and please subscribe to that channel. Every subscribe, every like, every follow helps the Dr. Jamie Show grow so that we can bring you the best guest and the best content possible. And of course, as always, if you have any feedback, feel free to leave that as well. Talk to you soon.